am what I am, and that's all what I am. May I know what I am, and that's all what I am. Listen, what do you hear? Listen, what do you hear? Listen again. What do you hear? This land needs everything. Look at over there, all the buffalo. Look at all those buffalo. Look at all those buffalo there. Again, what do you hear? You little scumbag! I got your name! I got your ass! You will not laugh! You will not cry! You will learn by the numbers! I will teach you! Now get up! Get on your feet! You had best unfuck yourself or I will unscrew your head and check down your neck! Sir, yes sir! Private Joker, why did you join my beloved corps? Sir, to kill sir! So you're a killer? Sir, yes sir! Let me see your war face! Sir! You got a war face? Ah! That's a war face! Now let me see your war face! Again, what do you hear? The term deranged sociopath it's thrown around a lot by the media, but it really applies to my next guest. Starting today, you can see him in Friday the 13th, Part 8. Jason Takes Manhattan. Please welcome Jason. How are you? Good. Uh, you know what I've noticed? I see all your movies, man. And you know what I've really noticed? You're angry. <laughs> and I, I don't mean to laugh, excuse me, it's just the way I am. But you're, 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 you're angry. What happened, man? How, where did it all begin? You know what I mean? Was it a woman? Again, what do you hear? Chaos on campus. Four people stabbed at the University of Texas. And one man is in custody tonight. Everyone was yelling, um, he's, he's here, he's here, um, and just running away. Let me see your other hand put it straight out from you. Do not move or you will be saved. Campus police say 21-year-old Kendricks White used a Bowie-style hunting knife to stab and kill a fellow student and injure three others. New information about today's deadly stabbing attack on the UT Austin campus from classmates of the accused attacker. If I had been there like I was planning to, maybe I could have reasoned with him. 
Shannon, Josh Anderson said that it wasn't until the photos of the suspect came out on social media that he realized it was actually someone who he'd sat next to in class and known the whole semester. Now, Josh Anderson also said that Kendricks White was on a pre-health track, which he says can be stressful. And when Kendricks told him last week that he had a lot going on outside of class, taking his mind off of academics, Anderson said he didn't think too much of it. But now he wonders if there could have been a connection. Anderson says that all semester, White has been nice and hardworking. It doesn't make sense that the guy he talked to in biology could be behind this kind of attack. He's amiable, like completely friendly, not the quiet kid in the back of the class, not the person stereotyped to this kind of thing. Not at all. He is very nice. He doesn't have any kind of disdain toward anybody, like any, any kind of Greek life or anything. No, he's just nice to everybody, and it seemed completely out of the blue. And another thing that Josh Anderson said to me about the photos that he saw of Kendricks White being arrested, those the, the bandana that Kendricks was wearing there, Josh said that the bandana was something that he wore regularly, but the knife that was on Kendricks' side, Josh said he'd never seen that before. Reporting live from the UT campus, Shannon will send it back to you in the studio. Alyssa, thank you. Here's what else we know about White. His Facebook account shows he graduated from Colleen High School in 2014. Travis County records show he was arrested and charged with DWI on April 4th of this year. The arrest affidavit says White crashed at the corner of Whitus and Dean Keaton. When an officer spoke to White, he said he took two happy pills, which were listed as Zoloft. Again, what do you hear? What happened? Uh, a guy came out of Greg with a knife. He had stabbed somebody inside Greg, and we were sitting in the tables. And he, went and he was over just walking by, like with stabbing a, like, dagger, people. And then he like wiped the blood off and threw it in that trash can over there. And then went and stabbed that other guy that's sitting over there at the table. And then started like darting for people, right? Yeah, there were people in line at uh, Chilantro, and then he just started stabbing people, and then everyone ran away. He stabbed and multiple people. Yeah, yeah and then he, yeah, he started walking across, and I followed him over to Jester so the cops would know where he's at. And then they stopped him at Jester, and he just like. As soon as the cop came up, he just dropped his knife and laid down. Wait, are you okay? You have, like, blood. Yeah, the kid, yeah, the kid got stabbed. I put my shirt on him. Oh, my God. What you talking about, Mr. D? As soon as the cop came up, he just dropped his knife and laid down. Wait, are you okay? You have, like, blood. Yeah, the kid, yeah, the kid got stabbed. I put my shirt on him. Oh, my God. What you talking about, Adelaide? As soon as the cop came up, he just dropped his knife and laid down. Wait, are you okay? You have, like, blood. Yeah, the kid, yeah, the kid got stabbed. I put my shirt on him. Oh, my God. What you talking about, Oscar? Do I like a student? Yeah, I was a student. No, I haven't talked to him yet. Yeah, he had this like a normal like hunting knife. Like it's pretty long now. Was it a student? Yeah, blood on your shirt. A student. Yeah. Some a kid got stabbed, so I put my shirt on. Was a student doing the shirt? Who'd you talk about? Yeah. Was it a student? Yeah, blood on your shirt. A student. Yeah. Some a kid got stabbed, so I put my shirt on. Was a student doing the shirt? What you talking about, Mister? Yeah, was it a student? Yeah, blood on your shirt. A student, yeah. Some a kid got stabbed, so I put my shirt on. Was a student doing the shirt? What you talking about, Manny? Yeah. New at 10, a Naperville woman is being hailed as a hero tonight for rushing to help a student who was slashed during a horrifying stabbing spree. Here's Dr. Leona Diamor giving life-saving aid to the student on the University of Texas campus in Austin. It was a hectic scene in Austin Monday afternoon. Police captured this man after they say he slashed four students with a hunting knife. One student died in the attack. Others rushed to get away from the melee. But Dia Moore says her experience as a Navy medic and chiropractor kicked in, and she knew exactly what to do. And I said, where have you been stabbed? And he said, in the back. And I looked, and I, I, when I looked, I was very alarmed. Um, because it was about an incision this big all across the base of the skull and um, the bone was visible. I didn't know if this kid was going to live or pass and I wanted to know who he was and I asked him his name and he told me his name and then I said, my name is Leona, I am a doctor, I am a Navy medic, you are safe and you are protected. Dia Moore is an EMT first responder as well. She reassured the student that he was not going to die and she stopped the bleeding before the paramedics got there. You can hear more from her about this ordeal on our website, cbschicago.com. Again, what do you hear? After several days in the hospital, one of three victims of Monday's stabbing is now back home with his family in Katy. 20-year-old Stuart Bayless was stabbed in the back and in the hand during the attack on Monday. 
The event or the stabbing severed Stewart's tendons and blood vessels in his right hand, injuring that hand. After undergoing surgery at UMC Brackenridge, doctors say in time he should again have full use of his hand. Stewart says he can't recall much about the attack. His family says they are grateful he's alive and grateful for the support they've received from family and friends. Stewart expects to be back in school. Coming up, facts to be back in school. Coming up, facts to be back in school. Coming up this fall. Again, what do you hear? The student stabbed on campus Monday is back home in Katy. He's recovering from some pretty severe wounds, and hundreds of his fellow students gathered on campus tonight to honor the victims and support each other. We'll hear from some of them on the campus in a moment, but first to Katy, where Larry Seward got a play by play of what happened Monday afternoon from Stuart Bayless. Larry? Lynn Bayless stepped outside his home behind me and told us he got hurt, leaving the gym to get a snack. He heard screaming, saw people running, then literally bumped into his attacker. Stuart Bayless says his attacker's blade didn't hurt right away. Felt this hand on my shoulder and it just felt like a, like a kind of a punch to the lower back. Not like a hard punch, but like kind of one where you're like, oh, hey, what's up, buddy? What you talking about, Louis? Felt this hand on my shoulder and it just felt like a, like a kind of a, punch to the lower back. Not like a hard punch, but like kind of one where you go like, oh, hey, what's up, buddy? What you talking about, Andrew? The sophomore from Katy turned, saw a Bowie knife lodged in his back, and tried to pull it out. He also was holding the blade. We both pulled on it at the same time, pretty much. And so that's when it just sliced my hand. Bayless severed seven tendons, two nerves, and two blood vessels in his middle finger. At the time, he knew nothing about the other three men stabbed on campus. One of them, Harrison Brown, died. When Bayless looked into his attacker's eyes, he saw a blank stare. He was just calm as can be, but I'm not going to lie, he looked like he kind of wanted to kill somebody. I, it was ridiculous. It just, I don't know how that could happen and why somebody wouldn't do that. This future Marine and Navy ROTC member could only think about those around him. For me, it just went into, you know, protection mode for everybody. I just told everybody run. He says he ran leaving friends near a library where paramedics took over. Two days and five surgeries later, Bayless is home wearing a cast and giant foam block on his right arm to help blood flow. Doctors expect him to be fine in mere months. Friends raised around $50,000 to help with his medical bills. While thankful, Bayless has just one request. We all send more thoughts and prayers to uh, Harrison and his family and all the other victims that were part of this. He wants other victims and their families taken care of too. Again, what do you hear? And I heard a couple people scream and I, you know, thought it was some joke and they were just chasing each other and I turned around and I, I saw this guy holding a knife and at first I didn't even, you know, realize what was going on because um, he was just walking with like no facial expression, didn't look in a hurry or anything. And he just grabbed this guy that was standing like right there next to me by the shoulder and shoved it into his back. Um, and then I, like, I, I didn't even realize what was happening because I was so shocked. But then this other guy um, screamed, get out of here because apparently the guy had already stabbed his friend as as well and he was like slumped over on a table and so then I just started running as fast as I could. It it just didn't even seem real to me at first like what was happening. Other than that I don't know that I was thinking. I mean I just saw the guy and it was just he was just eerily calm so I almost didn't realize it was an attack happening. You know, I mean, I thought it was some sort of joke that everyone was running away from, and then I saw him push it into the guy's back. It was, it was almost like a small machete. It was curved, maybe like this long. So not a huge thing, but I mean, big enough.
and uh, she witnessed this attack. So if you could just take us again, like through what you were doing when this happened and what you saw. Sure. So I was waiting in line at um, Chilantro, the food truck right out here. I was about to order, um, just waiting for like the girl in front of me to gather her stuff so I could order. And I heard a couple people scream and like I thought it was a joke or something that they were just chasing each other. And so I turned around and I saw a guy standing there with a, a knife about this long, looked like a small machete, it was like wide and, and curved. Um, and so, um, and it, I, at first I, you know, didn't even think about it as an attack. I thought it was a fake knife or whatever. Um, and then he just grabbed this guy by the shoulder and stabbed him in the back with him. And so then I turned around and started running away and I saw another guy yelling, everyone get out of here, and his friend was like slumped over on a table, kind of bloody, and I, I just saw that guy getting bandaged again, so apparently, um, before people even noticed, he hurt someone else and no one had seen, because he was just walking around very calmly, like with no you know, major facial expression or running around, he was just walking with a knife, so no one even noticed when he hit that first guy, I guess, because no one was screaming. Um, and everyone just screamed and ran away as fast as they could. I didn't even see what happened to the guy who stabbed. Have you talked to police yet? Did they take a statement from you? I called the police and, and gave a description of the guy while they were still trying to catch him. And they told me that they had him in custody while I was on the phone with them. Then they took my name and um, hung up. Alright, well thanks again for speaking to us. I appreciate it. Walked up to this guy that was just within arm's length of me and grabbed him by the shoulder and stabbed him in the back. While I was running away, I saw this other guy that was kind of bloodied up, sitting at a table, slumped over, and there was, you know, someone standing next to him yelling, get away. Students here in the valley felt impacted. Grabbed this guy that was standing like right there next to me by the shoulder and shoved it into his back. It, it just didn't even seem real to me at first. And I turned around and I, I saw this guy holding a knife and at first I didn't even, you know, realize what was going on because um, he was just walking with like no facial expression, didn't look in a hurry or anything. And he just grabbed this guy that was standing like right there next to me by the shoulder and shoved it into his back. Um, and then I, like, I, I didn't even realize what was happening because I was so shocked. Wait, and I saw this guy with a knife. It was like a small machete type thing. Um, and he grabbed this guy by the shoulder and stabbed him in the back. And then I just turned around and started running and so did everyone else. UTP, he was just walking around, you know, with no facial expression. He had a backpack on. He just looked like a, a normal student. Listen, what do you hear? Okay, first tell me your name and spell it for me. My name is Jude John, J-U-D-E, J-O-H-N. And what year are you? I'm a freshman. Okay, so tell us what you saw out here. Um, I was eating at J2 Dining Hall up in Jester, and a couple friends and I walked outside of the, of the dining hall and we saw a man, we saw a crowd of people down across the atrium, and there was a man that was being escorted out by two APD officers. Um, he had a black hat turned around and he was in handcuffs and they were walking him down the steps between J the Jester dorm and the PCL library. What was the atmosphere like out here? It was... Immediately there was fear. Everybody was scared. It was kind of a sense of shock that we didn't necessarily believe what was going on. But I'd say the predominant one, at least initially for me and the people around me, was confusion and fear were the two predominant feelings that I had. Uh, what do you think of something like this would happen here? It, nev it never seems like it's going to happen in your town. It never seems like it's going to happen to you or impact you in a direct way. But then whenever it does, it's, it seems surreal. It, it doesn't seem like it actually happened. And it's, it's a sense of shock. You don't, you don't know what to think because you never, you never thought it would happen here. And then it does and you're just, it, it's hard to feel safe. Whenever you had the um, murder last year and then this year you have a stabbing in broad daylight, it's hard to feel safe, to be quite honest. Have you ever seen that person around here before? I have never, I, I didn't get a good look at, look at his face. Um, I saw one picture of him and I had never seen him before. Okay. Looks like he might have been a student or no? I couldn't tell from my perspective. Thank you. Jim. Thank you. Woo. You never think it's going to happen. It's, but when it does, you don't know, I don't know how to react. Whenever you have 
that happens at night and then in broad daylight, whenever the main area of our university, Speedway, it happens there. Leaving many wondering why this occurred and how to move on from the shock. I never thought that something like this would happen here at our school. You always hear about it somewhere else, but you never think what it's going to be like if it ever happens here. And so it's, it hasn't really quite set in yet. We saw, um, you know, the police tackle this guy on the floor and kind of clear everyone and his backpack goes spilling. We saw, um, you know, the police tackle this guy on the floor and kind of clear everyone and his backpack goes spilling. Again. What do you hear? Now they say initially students thought it was a prank, and then when they saw students running and screaming, that's when they realized this was an intentional stabbing. The guy in the bandana, he pulled out a big Bowie knife in the food truck, and he, uh, you know, he stabbed it into the wood of the food truck, and everyone's kind of looking at him, looking around, and um, and you know, then he he turned and stabbed the guy, you know, in the kidney area, and then another guy in the neck, and then everyone's like, you know, holy crap! What you talking about, Mr. D? Again. Here. Did you see what happened? No. No? Sorry. You didn't see what happened either? There's like somebody, there's like this message that's going around of a girl who supposedly saw what happened, but. Do you know what it says? I can read it. Yeah, if you, could you read it? Because what does it say? So it says, uh, me and uh, Brandon were eating at Chilantro's or Kailantro's, the truck over there. Um, at a long picnic table and then at the end of the table some guy comes up in a bandana and stabs a knife into the table and looks at all of us in the eye. I thought it was some like theatrical stunt or something but then he pulls out the knife without saying anything and turns around to slash some guy in the back um, of the neck and then the slash victim grabs Adam and I wait some sort of like gotcha but then the attacker walks to another guy and stabs him in the kidney region in his back and then some guy says run, and like everyone just like ran to the cops. Oh my gosh. But like I don't know like the merit of that, but like she says she was there. I don't know why you could make that up. But, like, yeah, that's it's horrible. Oh my, and she said he was wearing a bandana. And I saw pictures um, of, yeah. Of the person? That's what the person looks like? Oh, I don't know if we can see it on there. Let me see. So the person... Okay, so he's just wearing a, a head bandana. Interesting. Wow, that's crazy. What's this for? This is just for documenting what's happening right now. But thanks, you know. All right, guys, so here it is. This is where, this is really freaking sad, but this is where the body is supposedly at, right there. There's like a white uh, blanket that has been put over the victim of this stabbing. It's really really a huge tragedy here we have another stabbing again what do you hear police say a separate stabbing in west campus happened several hours after the attack on campus kxan's phil prazen has those details from 26th and oasis Robert and Shannon, the Department of Public Safety and the Austin Police Department have increased resources here in West Campus after the two stabbings. In this particular case here on 26 in Nueces, the victim told officers that he was trying to protect a woman being threatened by a man with a knife. Now he ran in to break it up and then the police are still looking for both of those people. And I don't trust anyone with all that happening. Darby Blodgett stayed inside all Monday afternoon and night. I didn't want to get stabbed. And still tries to shake off the chills in West Campus. I'm not worried about what's on campus because usually they're pretty safe about like Sherwalk and stuff like that. It's just off campus is what I'm kind of scared of. Austin police say they're dedicating more resources to investigate a stabbing reported two blocks west of campus Monday. The victim said he saw a man threatening a woman with a knife. At that point, he said instinct kicked in and he charged at the suspect, taking the suspect to the ground. The suspect ran off and the victim checked into St. David's around 4.30 p.m. with a stab wound to the leg. Police are investigating this case separate from the stabbing spree on campus. We see no link between the incident that occurred in West Campus and the incidents that occurred earlier in the day at the Gregory Gym and Jester Estates, uh, Jester Dormitory area. Uh, again, we see no link between those. 
Well, and I just got off the phone with the Austin Police Department. They're still looking for any information from people who walk by or who know anything about the case or anybody of, of the people involved. There will be increased resources here in West Campus until they find the suspect and also for just peace of mind here for students in West Campus. Back to you in the studio. Phil, thanks. The timing of this crime was tricky because police were trying to chase down a lot of other unfounded rumors at the time. They say that's partly why they did not release information about the second stabbing incident until 9.30 last night, which Chief Manley calls a failure. We'll explore the other bogus reports that became distractions. That's coming up here at 6 o'clock. that was sitting at a picnic table by the food truck and then he like slammed a really long knife on a table and um, then just kind of quietly stood up and stabbed a guy in the neck area behind him and then that guy like grabbed the back of his neck and he went to somebody else and stabbed him in like the lower back kidney region and um, yeah. And then here he like stabbed I think two more people and now like one's one has died. Then they arrested him in the Jester West lobby. So but and then now there was like a bomb that in the communications building with the banner on um, the sky bridge that read tuition pays for bombs. Walking by Gregory Gym, and I saw a lot of ambulances rushing in from that side. Um, and from other students, I heard that there was a guy that was going around stabbing people. He stabbed somebody by Gregory Gym, and he slashed somebody on the back of the neck, um, also over there. Uh, and he was arrested a little while ago, around 2 p.m. Um, I know that there was also a bomb threat made by someone named the UT Vandals. to put everybody kind of at ease here today because again, I think a lot of people were out and about. It was a late lunch time. There were a lot of students, including our own intern, Aaron Chancy, who happened to be right across the street at Jester Hall. You walk in, what did you hear? So I walked in um, and I mean, immediately I saw people pointing at the Northwest um, entrance, just yelling, he's here, he's here, pointing over there um, and running away. Um, I had no idea what was happening. I didn't know what they were referring to. So I just ran into the bathroom and, and hit and tried to find out what was going on. And at that point, you didn't even realize there was someone with a knife running around campus, right? I had no idea. Um, I walked in and I, I asked a girl, I said, do you know what's happening? She said, there's a guy with a knife and that was all she knew either. Um, but I did not know for a while what was going on. So you're in the bathroom. Do you hear the conversation in the hallway? Um, because we saw some pictures of people actually kneeling mm -hmm. on him. Um, yes, yeah, so the police were kneeling on him. I, I saw that as well when I, when I came out. Um, basically, I hit in the restroom I maybe my ears tuned out I, I wasn't really sure what was going on I just waited until I could tell it was probably safe to go back out when people were going um, in and out of the restroom at seeming leisurely not hiding um, and when I could hear voices outside um, when I came out there was a big crowd surrounding um, the area and the police were kneeling on him and had him uh, in handcuffs you're a junior. This mm -hmm. is the second time in two years where there has been a death on campus. Mm -hmm. I went to a big school very similar to UT. What do you feel about your safety here? It's um, it's it's really difficult to to know. You know, you know that obviously UT 
UTPD was on this really quickly, um, but it's so hard knowing that this could just happen to anyone. You don't, you can't predict when this is going to happen. Um, I typically feel very safe on campus, but definitely after last year and, and this occurrence today, I'm probably going to be on edge for a while. Um, I do, knowing how quickly UTPD responded, I do have faith in them to, to keep the campus safe. Um, and I'm grateful that they were able to respond so quickly, but um, it's definitely tough to feel safe when something like this happens in a, in a short period of time again. We're glad you're safe. Me Thanks. Too. Again, what do you hear? Today at the University of Texas, uh, we are in mourning and we are hurting as a university community. Bells ringing Fires. in honor of the attack victims, including murdered freshman student Harrison Brown. And how much he loved being a Longhorn. While fears echo across campus. There are a lot of unanswered questions at this time and our students are not only concerned. More patrols around the university and police revealing new information about the man who's accused of the violent stabbing. Arguably one of the nicest people um, I ever met. He had such a, an eagerness to get involved on campus um, and follow in his brother's footsteps, who was um, really involved as well. Um, he loved music. He was such a talented um, you know, a singer and guitar player. Um, one of his favorite artists was uh, John Mayer. Um, and you know, he, was just, he had a, such a giving spirit as well. Um, you know, obviously his, his, his father um, was diagnosed with ALS and so, um, you know, Harrison was really um, adamant about supporting the ALS Foundation while also supporting his father. Um, and he was so family oriented, um, you know, he would always post pictures of, you know, his father on his social media and was just really a rock um, for them. And, um, you know, it's just a horrible, horrible loss for our community. So we really lost, um, you know, a special person so tough day for students to talk about a student a friend who was just here yesterday <laughs> terry a memorial has been set up here in front of gregory gym where students have placed flowers to remember harrison brown's life and we spoke with and were there as two of his friends took the initiative to buy and place the first flowers here they say to bring peace Nothing beyond grief, really. Bells resounded throughout the University of Texas campus promptly at 2.30 Tuesday afternoon to remember someone who loved music. I felt like we were doing a service to Harrison. I just felt as though we were giving Harrison something that he deserved. Friends of Harrison Brown say it was at this spot at Gregory Gym where tragedy occurred. We were a little bit timid to visit the site again. In spite of the fear, Vikram Seth and his friend decided to place flowers here. We noticed that there was a lot of flowers on the tables, but the actual spot where our friend Harrison passed away, there was uh, it was in front of Gregory and people were walking all over it. No, I, I don't think people really understood that that's where he passed away. You want to say something? When asked to think of Harrison in that moment. Try and remember Harrison as who he was. Nearly speechless. So they'll let this memorial share their loss. And Harrison was also a member of an on-campus a cappella group, the Ransom Notes, the Ransom Notes. The Ransom Notes. Here on campus. Now the president of the organization says in part, quote, Harrison was one of the newest members of our group. He was an amazing talent, but more importantly, he was a great person. And Terry, we're really just scratching the surface of who Harrison was. We'll have more at 6 o'clock tonight. Terry, back to you.